time for Nergasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And today we're gonna be talking about the exciting topic that is distributed denial of service attacks, otherwise known as DDoS attacks on the internet. So the first thing that you need to know is that DDoS attackers are not hackers. Now hackers can carry out DDoS attacks, but literally anybody can carry out a DOS or a DDoS attack. Now let's start out and talk about DOS attacks. That's where this all started. Just simply stands for denial of service. Now the goal of this attack is for you to overwhelm a target with more bandwidth, basically send them more information and more requests for information than they can receive or respond to. Now in doing that, you overwhelm their internet connection and they can no longer send information out, which means they are effectively dead on the internet. Now this all really started when people started getting high speed internet connections at home, mainly cable modems. Back in the day, people used to be able to get five and 10 megabit connections when cable modems first came out while everybody else was still on these tiny little ISDN connections, even dial up, which were the easiest things in the world to kick off. And you had a couple of people out there that were lucky enough to have DSL, which was still one tenth or one twentieth, in some cases one one hundredth, the speed of the cable modem connections. Now the way it works is the person who has the cable modem, the faster internet connection, basically uses a tool that sends information rapidly to the IP address of the person you want to attack. Now you send that information so fast because you have a quick internet connection, but unfortunately they can't receive all the information fast enough so you saturate a hundred percent of their internet connection. You have thereby effectively denied them service to the internet. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now the reason DOS attackers aren't considered hackers is because they rarely if ever understand what they're actually doing. They fall into the category of script kiddies. These are people that just go download prefabricated and built scripts and tools on the internet to attack somebody not really knowing what's going on under the hood at all. That's where I found that most of the people that do this kind of attack fall because real hackers will exploit a weakness in a system to gain access to it. Whereas the DDoS attackers are literally just exploiting one massive architecture flaw in the internet to achieve their goal. Now the most common tools that are known throughout history for performing a DOS attack are low orbit ion cannon and its predecessor high orbit ion cannon which are tools that are designed to just basically fake packet requests and massively spam a port on another computer with it until you overwhelm or saturate their connection. It's also capable of sending packets that require a reply like a ping or something to that effect so that the other computer is forced to saturate both its downstream and its upstream and respond to a target that's not where the packet it truly originated from. This is called spoofing so that they're putting out a lot more bandwidth. They're effectively doubling what you're sending to them. Now again, these attacks in and of themselves are not that effective anymore because so many people have high speed internet connections now that it's really hard for one internet connection to take, out, take down another internet connection in a one to one fight. Now that's where things evolved to DDoS. Basically DDoS just stands for distributed denial of service attack. If you can't kill somebody in a one on one fight, then what do you do? You go and get a gang and the gang overwhelms the one person. Now this is why you see a lot of corporations getting attacked now is because denial of service attacks can take tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of computers on the internet and target them all like a magnifying glass on a little poor unsuspecting ant, which is hopefully not you, but if it is you, your internet connection is gonna be kaput. Now when they attack corporations like Sony and Microsoft, the whole Xbox One server and the PSN network, those attacks are effective because of the massive volume of people that are attacking those servers and the diversity of where those attacks are coming from because those machines are literally on every network around the world. So you can't just flip off the switch and say, oh, I'm gonna block all traffic from this one IP range. It will not be effective because you're literally getting attacked from so many different vectors that are also the same vectors that normal users that would use your service would also use so blocking them would effectively take your network offline anyways. Now the way that the distributed denial of service attacks are carried out requires that there be a bot network deployed because obviously you're not going to be able to convince 100,000 people to let you use their internet connection 100% to attack somebody that they may may not disagree with. So of course the logical way to do this is to infect as many computers as you can with bots. Now the idea of a bot network is to basically infect as many computers as you can with a backdoor that allows you to remotely execute or channel traffic through that computer without the person operating that computer knowing that it's even happening. Now since most computer users like our uncles and our aunts and our moms and our grandparents have no clue how to check network throughput and everything like that, they're just gonna think the internet's slowing down 
when realistically what's happening on their computers that's participating in a huge coordinated effort to attack a single target somewhere on the internet. Now, unfortunately, the most common ways that you get a bot installed on your computer is by going to malicious websites and clicking on misleading dialogues that allow them to install a payload on your computer or downloading torrents like movies and music and things like that. Uh, more often than not, now they're compressing those in an executable archive so that when you think you're decompressing the movie or you're decompressing the music, what you're also doing is installing a bot in the background on your computer that you will never find. Now, unfortunately, most malware and virus detectors cannot find many of these back doors because these little back doors that are being installed, they're doing it in a way that makes it look like activity that a normal application would do. And because it doesn't have that signature of a virus, the detector has no way of knowing that it's malicious unless it's doing something that's very, very bad, which in most case, all these things are doing is relaying internet traffic. And the, the spyware detector and malware detector has no idea what traffic is actually going through it looking at just the code. So it just gives it a pass. Now, until somebody discovers the bot and actually reports it to the company, that, that creates your malware scanner, they can't create a signature to basically go out on the internet and fix the rest of them. And even if they did, the percentage of people that are running that specific malware detector is gonna be quite small, and it's still not gonna have a huge impact on the size of their botnet. So realistically, the only safe way to protect yourself from having a bot installed on your computer is to not visit malicious websites. Make sure you only visit websites that you know to be good. And if you run across the website that's trying to give you free stuff or give you a free game or give you free something, just Alt F4 out of the thing, kill your browser and get the hell away. Don't click on X's, don't click on OK's, don't click on anything because often they will have JavaScript that will mislead you into thinking you're clicking a box that says, no, I'm not interested in this, but what you're really doing is clicking a box that's saying, yes, absolutely, please install shitware on my computer. Also, as much as I know some of you will hate to hear this, stop pirating, okay? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying stop pirating from the perspective of the legalities because I'm not gonna become the nanny state channel here on YouTube. I'm saying that when you download the software from these sites and you download free software, free music and everything, more often than not, they come in some kind of executable decompressible package or they will have an executable called install or setup or something within the archive. And the second that you run it, it looks like it's the same installer for the programmer. It looks like it's a key generator or something like that. But what it's doing in the background is actually installing a small bot network in the background on your computer that will remotely listen for commands. And when it's ordered to do something, it's going to do it, which means your computer is now participating in these denial of service attacks. And the problem is there's no way for your internet provider to find out that you're a part of the denial of service attacks because these people are smart enough to only do a few connections a second through your computer to their target. So it doesn't look like you're just hammering them as hard as you can. It looks like you're actually a legitimate user, but you're doing it along with hundreds of thousands of other unsuspecting people. And that entire payload coming from around the world is what is impacting and destroying that server and taking it to its knees. Now, another really popular method for the DDoS bot network is Tor. If you use Tor, I would recommend that you actually stop using it. Now, Tor is actually an anonymous proxy tool. It's designed to mask the true origin of your internet surfing by going through another computer on the Tor network at random. But by you starting Tor, you're also agreeing to allow other computers on the network to randomly connect and go through your computer to the internet so that it obfuscates all of the connections to the servers and literally nobody can be found. Now, the Tor network has been compromised to some degree and they've actually tracked down some of the more illegal stuff like child pornography sites and the drug dealers on Silk Road have been apprehended. So Tor isn't even considered a really safe uh, anonymous method to use the internet in the first place. But on top of that, now you have tons of people writing DDoS tools that actually will utilize the Tor network to create tens of thousands of connections through different computers on the Tor network and have them all connect to one target, effectively DDoSing it. Now the servers themselves can stop an attack from one endpoint rather easily. So if I just did a DOS attack against Sony, Sony would be like, okay, this asshole's connecting to me 10,000 times a second. It's pretty obvious that that's not normal usage of our website or our service. We're gonna go ahead and block his port at the router. And then that data is not gonna move on to our server. It's still gonna saturate and eat up bandwidth to a certain point, but it's not gonna take their service down. If 100,000 different IP addresses are all connecting and each one of them is only making one or two connections a second, there's no way for Sony or your ISP to determine that you are a malicious attacker or just a DDoS script that's being coordinated to do an attack. So hopefully you guys are understanding that. It's basically just doing enough to help the attack, but not enough to be detected. And that is why DDoS bot networks are so hard to take down. They're massively difficult to locate. And then once you locate them, you might be able to take down, you know, 10 or 100 
of the bots after doing a really in-depth investigation. But in that same amount of time, a bunch of people are still downloading torrents and, and installing these malware things and going to porn sites and clicking on the dialogues like, yeah, I don't want to be on this site. And in the background, it's installing malware on your computer that's erecting these bots and these bots are coming up faster than anybody can take them down. And now the bot networks have grown to a size where they can actually start taking down sizable targets, not just Sony and stuff like that, but the biggest attack in history just happened a couple of days ago on October 21st, there was a massive denial of service attack against Dyn, which is one of the biggest DNS servers on the internet. Now, DNS is a name resolution protocol that is used to take the host name like google.com and turn it into an IP address. Now, the reason why all software uses a host name instead of an IP address is because a company may move their data center, or they may have to change their network provider. And in that case, they want to be able to have their host name always resolved to their new address. It's kind of like forwarding your PO box to your home address. If you move, you just re-forward that PO box, but the PO box stays the same. That's why people use host names when they're coding things. So the majority of connections that are made over the internet via the web browser and everything are by host name, not by IP address. Now, when they attacked Dyn and took it down, there was no way for you to resolve those host names into IP addresses, which meant virtually every site on the internet from your perspective was affected to some degree. And it looked like you were suffering some kind of internet outage, but it was on a much grander scale. Now, DNS attacks are fairly rare because the DNS servers use other services like Cloudflare and stuff like that to basically distribute and obfuscate traffic so that there's no way for the attackers to get a direct line of sight and beat on the target with the rifle, so to speak. But the bot network has grown so large now from all the people getting these malware packets installed on their computer that they can actually attack a target that is on a huge data center with nearly limitless bandwidth and even has obfuscation in place to protect them. And they're still dealing damage, which means these bot networks are going to keep growing and growing and growing until we see these attacks on a level where the internet just completely stops working. Now behind me, I have a couple of sites open. I'll have those linked in the video description that show you a real time view of the distributed denial of service attacks that are going on on the internet. And these are basically done by sniffing the traffic that's coming through the largest hubs on the internet and seeing where the source and where the destination was for this traffic as it comes through these hubs. And they can detect where the DOS attacks are coming from because they can go, oh, okay, well, there's a million connections going to this one port on this one server. It's more than likely an attack. Now there are some false positives here because you do have some huge services that get an amazing amount of traffic pushed back and forth between the source and the target in the form of like video streaming and stuff like that. So I don't think that these things are entirely accurate in the representation of their attacks, but you can see the large amount of traffic is actually exchanging in the United States between foreign nations and especially China and Korea, which are well, well known places for cyber attacks. So in a nutshell, just as a quick recap, realize that you could be a part of a denial of service attack without even knowing it. If you have malware on your machine, even older undetectable malware that never got a virus signature so it can never be detected, every time that one of these DOS attacks is happening in the background, your computer is participating in it. The only way to catch these things is to install something like Glasswire or to configure your network router to keep a log and then keep tabs on what you're connecting to throughout the day and see if you see erroneous connections going to places that you know for a fact you have no software that would connect to that endpoint. It's not going to be 100% effective at detecting if you have the malware, but it should give you some kind of idea of, wait a second, I shouldn't have that much bandwidth going outbound. I really shouldn't. And if you do end up having some of this malware, you suspect you have this malware, you should reinstall your computer and make sure that you secure it better and you change your habits. If you absolutely have to do things that involve downloading malicious, potentially malicious software or visiting sites that could be bad, then what you should do is install a virtual machine. Go download VBox or one of the other virtual machines that I'll have listed down in the video description. And you can basically install a virtual machine with a virtual version of Windows. And any damage that's done to that computer, you can literally just go snap and go back to a snapshot and undo anything that was done from the time that you turned that computer on. That is the safe way to do anything that you think might be malicious. And you need to be very diligent and just expecting that everything that you do online that isn't from like a VeriSign signed reputable source has a malicious intent. That's the best thing you could do. If you're downloading something from downloads.com or CNET or something like that, don't just implicitly trust it. If you're downloading something that requires you to have a download manager to download it, question it. Use your sandbox computer to download it. Make damn sure 
that you don't get infected because that's the biggest thing that's going to build these bot networks and allow all these little script kitties to go download their little script and send a command to these huge distributed networks or use Tor if you're on Tor. That's the easiest way for them to use you because there's tons of scripts out there that utilize Tor. And I'm not going to link any of these scripts because I don't want you guys performing these attacks yourself. That's, that, that's not the purpose of this video. This is not a tutorial on how to go become a little script kitty and tell all your friends that you're a hacker because you helped take Sony down. That's not what this video is about. This video is targeted at the people that are concerned about being used by those script kitties to basically uh, carry out these attacks. So guys, I hope this video opened your eyes just a little bit about what distributed denial of service attacks are and their evolution from the DOS attack back when cable modems were first coming online and people were getting a hold of actual bandwidth. So guys, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles over on Twitter. And if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know and I will do some follow-up videos on some other stuff like what is hacking actually, what is social engineering, and we'll follow up on a couple other topics. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time. And if you DDoS attack, you're not only an asshole, but you're a script kitty, and you know absolutely nothing about anything worthwhile. Otherwise, you'd be using some other method of attack that's unique to you, and not just pushing a button. I'm sorry, but pushing a, a button doesn't make you an elite hacker. It, it doesn't. It, it seriously doesn't. Kind of makes you laughable. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.